One possible model for an American attack on Syria happened in 1998 when the U.S. launched cruise missiles at targets in Afghanistan and Sudan. That was in retaliation for the bombings of two American embassies in Africa. Retired General Anthony Zinni was commander of the United States Central Command at that time. General, good morning. Uh, good morning, Gail. Anthony. General, you heard the president say he didn't want to get drawn into a long conflict in Syria, but can we launch a surgical military strike there without getting caught in an open-ended war? Well, I think the problem is uh, red lines. Uh, it, uh, Bashar Assad, much like Saddam Hussein, will continue to violate any red lines or do unacceptable acts. And we'll find ourselves doing much like we did in the 90s with uh, Iraq, that we will repeatedly conduct these kinds of uh, actions to, uh, against the, uh, these kinds of acts and find ourselves in sort of a slow rolling campaign and unsure where it might lead unless we have a strategy in place to understand how this is going to play. It just can't be a one and done. You can't assume that there isn't anything that's going to provoke another response. And General, do you think at this point we have to do something and what should the end game be? Well, we have to do something because the president laid a red line down. This is an unacceptable act and, and so I think we're committed or we'll look weak and he'll continue to test us. Uh, I think we need to think in terms of a longer campaign, not that this might be just one act and then finished. In Iraq, what we did, because we assumed we would be doing this repeatedly, we, we decided what kinds of targets we wanted to take down to make the regime more vulnerable. For example, we rolled back and basically removed his air defense systems. So I think looking at command and control, air defense, not assuming this is just a one-act play, but look at the long term as to how to, to deplete and, and uh, draw down any kind of capabilities he may have to make him more vulnerable in the future. Now, the trick here, though, is same as we had with Saddam. If the objective is not regime removal, you don't know when you might hit that point where you make the regime so weak it might topple anyway, and you have to be prepared for that eventuality. General, Iran and Syria have, have threatened to retaliate. What happens if they try to attack Israel? Well, this should be part of the planning. We, we should always assume that any capability they have, sleeper cell terrorist attacks, use of Hezbollah to attack Israel, uh, attacking uh, our targets in, in the region, U.S. military, we should have a plan in place to respond to each of those potential. We should not make any assumptions. A, a good military planner plans against capabilities, not assumptions, and we should have a plan of response assuming that all these could possibly happen. And what do you make, General, of the Russians moving two ships into the Mediterranean? Is this just sort of them flexing their muscles? I, yeah, I think that's more just to send a signal or demonstrate their displeasure. It's not, it's not a threat in any way. We certainly have overwhelming force uh, compared to them in the region, and I don't think they're interested in, in, in any way interfering with us. I think it's their way of message sending. And are you surprised at the leaks that we're hearing coming out about this about this situation? Yeah, you know, it's not surprising, though, because it, it's been that way. We, we went through the same things, uh, in, you know, with Iraq and uh, uh, the attacks on the terrorist targets. It, it's the way Washington is, unfortunately, uh, that those leaks uh, come out. I guess it's part and parcel of uh, the way our uh, open government uh, works and the nature of what happens in D.C. All right. Thank you, General, very much for joining us this morning.